and this is episode 36, Sunrise. <laughs> it is um, Monday morning, November 12th. Happy Veterans Day to all of you out there with the day off. And the reason for the season, thank you all the service men and women and their families for their service that they give to this country. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so the reason this week's episode is called Sunrise is because I had hoped that the sun would actually be painting the window behind me and giving us something pretty. But it's not. I woke up a little too early and I wanted to get this recorded before I head off to work. Yes, I have to work. And no, I did not dye my hair. My hair is just wet. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so <clears throat> Christmas, this thing called Christmas that happens every year, sort of like the sunrise that happens every day. It is looming there. It is on the horizon. It is about to happen. And not to get you worried, but I hope your knitting's getting done. <laughs> Personally, I set out to do a little coffee there, burnt me up. Um, I set out to knit four pairs of socks for other people for Christmas. I had three of those pairs done. Uh, <clears throat> two sets of fingerless wrist warmers. I have two halves. And I'm sorry, the cam I tried to record yesterday. The camera shut off four times and I just got mad and trashed the whole endeavor. So I'm kind of like, oh, is it still going? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I need to relax. It's all charged. It's ready. Um, so four, four pairs of, uh, two pairs of fingerless mitts and I'm half, I'm half. And um, the washcloths with the soap, that's done. This is Mr. Linus. He came to say good morning. Is it me? Um, is there anything else? Oh, and then the hat for my BFF, which is dead. So I realized last week that I needed to get my butt in gear and knit that last pair of socks at the beginning of November. <clears throat> so I pulled up uh, some yarn. Actually, I went to my yarn stash, and I know I had promised you that every week I would be casting on or showing you something with my Rhineback yarn. And I was looking at my yarn, and none of my Rhineback sock yarn was good for her. It just wasn't a good fit. So I some recently acquired yarn, the Desert Vista Dye Works. I think it was Diane of Knittables who had the code. And so I jumped in there with like 20% off. I got a bunch of skeins of her stuff. Really super excited to have. So this skein is Golden Session. And I cast on, I was feeling quite motivated. Cast on for uh, what the What You're Swatching podcast. Emily over there. Emily, I think it's Lock. I don't know. Her pattern, the Vanilla Bean Sock Pattern. I, because, um, you know, self striping yarn is great, but sometimes you do want to switch it up a little bit. And slip stitch is super easy. I love her recipe that she put up there. So I cast on and started going. And uh, this yarn is really nice to work with. I completely enjoy this base. Like, I've flipped back and forth between this and another sack yarn recently, and I like using this so much more. So this is her Vizio base. And it is 75 Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. So school's in session. Um, yeah, and I think the reason she called it that, obviously, is this is school color. So, you know, you have the gold and black as a school color, the black and maroon as a school color, like Karen's mom, <laughs> the white and blue, all those color choices. So, I'm going along, working on this, and I get to about here, and I realize this really isn't her color palette either. Like, I think this is pretty. I find this very visually appealing. She's not going to. Um, I've knit her some... The most recent pair I knit her were the Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Was that, or no, it's the Tweedles was the name of the yarn by Three Use Twist and Fiber. Absolutely loved it. This electric blue, bright cherry red, and then this same golden color, like harvest golden autumn color. She really doesn't like those socks. I know she doesn't. And she'd rather wear the solid green Baudelaire's by Cookie A that I knit her. She, she wears those a lot more than anything else. So something more muted, more calm that matches, matches with more things. So um, these weren't going to be a good fit for her. Fine, I'll knit them for me because you know I love the knit socks for me. Uh, so 
those were kind of put on hold. I'm going to keep going, but uh, not as quickly. I'm sorry about that. That would be the shower. <laughs> I'll just speak up. You'll hear me better, right? So, all right, the Christmas knitting was bust. So I pull out a skein of um, Knit Picks Fully Skein, which <clears throat> you can see right here. This is the minty colorway, and I cast on. Thinking I'll just do my standard two by two rib. It'll make her happy. She'll like them. It'll be good basic socks. Well, when I knit one of my previous pairs, I knit a pair for my dad. And when, immediately when I finished knitting for him, I used the leftovers and then a pair for Roland. You may recall socks like that, right? Um, so I knit a pair for Roland. I thought, or I know, I will have enough extra because these are 440 yards between the two skeins to knit a pair for Roland. So why not knit Roland's pair first? They're fast, they're easy. I like baby socks. So <coughs> they're not really baby socks anymore because his foot length is five and a half inches. Oh, we're still recording. Okay. <clears throat> so I cast on my standard 10 inches, ten stitches on each side of the toe, increased to 48 stitches, and started working my way down the foot. About the time it was time to do heel increases or short rows or whatever I was going to do, I was sitting on the couch being lazy, didn't want to look online and try and find my notes on what I typically do for socks for him. And Next to the couch, there's a set of stairs going upstairs. Under the stairs is a closet, and in that closet <laughs> is a bookshelf. On the bookshelf are knitting books, uh, fingering weight yarn, and then some worsted weight yarn. Like, that's my inside stash, basically. The rest of the stash is housed out in the garage in big gallon bins. But that's the stuff that, yeah, I'm going to need that at 4 a.m. on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Because I can't sleep and I have to cast on something new with some yarn right now. So I keep that stuff in the house. That's like this special stash. But along with the special stash are books. So I pull out Wendy Johnson's Socks from the Toe Up for Everyone, I think is the name of it. It's the second sock book. And I look in there at her um, critter socks. Yep, yeah, critter socks. And <clears throat> it's interesting to me that it has a gusset. On the heel. I've never done a gusseted heel, so perfect. Kids saw it. That's a good best time to try it out. So I went along, followed pattern, did it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I've never done a gusseted heel. It sounds weird to say because a slip stitch heel, the one with the heel flap, it's like my standard sock. I assume everyone's standard sock. That has a gusset in it. So when we say a gusseted heel, it's sort of misleading, at least to me. Um, what Wendy is labeling a gusset heel, I think of more as having this V shape where you do increases and then decreases, if that helps. It looks a bit more like a store-bought sock to me, because if you ever look at your store-bought socks because you can't see my heel, um, there's a line of stitches and then they break out like a Y. Like a y. This is similar to that in, in that there is this Y shape around the heel, so um, do that what you will. I think that the, it, and it happened to fall that the gusset decreases fell right where I had a color change, so that made it interesting that it, you know, you really can't tell what's going on there. And the, um, the gusset, there we go, the gusset effect of, you know, the decreases, it looks really cool. I like the way she had us do it. No idea how these are going to fit him. Haven't tried them on yet. I know I knit too and I didn't try them on him. I gotta get the grippies on the soles. Um, <laughs> and you know what? The pair that I'm making for my mom, I'm totally putting grippies on the sole. <laughs> she has hardwood floors all over her house and they just took up the carpeting on the stairs and had that changed to hardwood. She's fallen down the stairs in her socks by me. I know, I know. I didn't take it personal, but she was very upset that her socks attacked her and she slipped coming down the stairs and I think she was carrying her cat and oh, it was this and she refused to wear socks for like a year afterwards on the stairs. But I'm very chatty Kathy today. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put grippies on the one, the socks I knit for her, the same as I put on Roland's, and it'll be this whole thing in Christmas, and everyone will think it's hilarious. 
because she, yes, has the walking skills of a 14-month-old. <laughs> so, here are the socks. Um, the striped sequence of the fleecy yarn I maintained for the foot. And then after I did the heel, I was kind of bored. And I liked, I like Roland has socks that have real tiny, tiny stripes. I like that look a bit more. And so I switched it up and started alternating the skeins to do that. I decided I was okay with fraternal socks. They did not have to match. So, and you can see that the leg ended up being that same uh, pale aqua teal color mixed with the navy and just a different stripe sequence. So that's fine. Just fine with me. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going <clears> to <throat> put these on rolling now or if I'm going to wrap them up with her Christmas present so that I get both. I don't know. We'll see. He's not growing very fast anymore. I'll be really excited to go to his 15 month checkup because Previously, like when he was first born, we were changing his clothes out like every two weeks. He was up a size, up a size, up a size. And now, I want to say he's been in 18 months for six months and no sign of getting out of it. Like, the, I have to retire a couple of pairs of his pants because they're tight across his little bum diaper. But the length is just right, so I don't know. Mm. Side note, I tried hemming some pants yesterday, some 14 month 2T. I like pants that are too long, but they fit really nice around the waist and they're really cute, warm sweatpants, like stylish sweatpants. I tried hemming them. Yeah, no. And when your hem is like that big, <laughs> just don't put them on the kid, wait. So, anyways, it was rather humorous. So those are socks for rolling. They are on and off the needles. <clears throat> that fast. Boom, done. No, not really Christmas Day. But, you know. Okay, and so then the part of this that is for Christmas knitting, I do have the first sock in progress. So I am, sorry, mid heel. And so, and I got mad. We were watching football yesterday, and I was not watching. I was paying more attention to turning my heel, and I just said, ah! And so I set it down. But there you go. There's the first one so far. So you can see. Same stripe pattern, yay! And she doesn't care how long her cuff is. It could be two inches, the leg on it. It could be five inches, she won't care. So um, this is what I have left of the first skein. <laughs> so it's probably gonna be an inch cuff, but you can see the second skein I have quite a bit. So who knows, I might just leave these on, uh, on the needles and knit the second one because I have a suspicion that this is much bigger than this one was. I might have alternated slightly differently for the legs out. Whatever, we're going to use every last bit of that yarn up, and so then I can mark it as out. Gone, done, finished. So, oh, and all the socks on today's program are knit on Knit Picks US size 1.5 needles because that is my needle size of course. Um, the Knit Picks yarn is a little lighter weight, a little thinner than the Desert Vista Dye Works, so I like the both of them, both socks have a nice fabric, but the Desert Vista has, has a little bit denser fabric. I like it. So, that's sock knitting. Um, fingerless mitt knitting. So, you have seen these before. These are the beaded fingerless mitts by Margie Lafreniere. Frenier? Frenier. Um, and I knit one, oh, I knit the same knit. One of each color, right? These are for Roland's daycare ladies. Steve picked out the colors for me. Um, actually, this is Into the World. It's, what month is it? It's her August Club Colorway Pamu Kale, and that is her Pakoku base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino <coughs> Nylon yarn. Um, it's a great yarn. It's I can tell it's going to be an amazing workhorse sock yarn. It is not super soft on my hand, which will be fine, except that one, the other lady in Marlon's classroom is getting this pair of 100% Superwash Merino mitts with Claudia hand paints, which is very, very, very silky soft. So it feels, while the finished product, these actually look nice with the stitch definition is better and you can see the cables better. To the uh, 
non-knitter, I don't want Tracy to feel slighted because Andrea gets the really soft pair. So I think I'm going to leave this as a single one, put it in the gift box. Well, no, I'll make a second one before I put it in the gift box. But I'm going to knit, <clears throat> go stash diving and get a second single skein of Claudia's out of my Claudia stash. I have a, a rather extensive Claudia hand jeans. And she was the first hand dyed sock yarn I ever bought. And my LYS carries a lot of it and gets seasonal updates all the time. And she's a great eye and I'm just a sucker. <laughs> so this color, I believe, is called um, Caribbean Blues. <coughs> Excuse me, if I'm remembering right. And <coughs> I knit this back in August. I love the pattern. I'm not actually doing the beading. Oh, the pattern is from the 101 Skein Wonder Book series. It's from the Sock Yarn one. And that's a great go-to. Like, ugh, I need a pattern. I don't want to use Sock Yarn. And I, I like that book as a resource, personally. Sorry about that. Anyways, oh, mine is my legs. Ah, I'm falling asleep. And I love having you sit on me, honey. But, okay, can we sit like this? Does that work? Um, it does work. Okay, so I pulled them back out and I'm on a second one using US 2.5 needles, so slightly larger than sock needles. Because, you know, they don't have to be dense and wear forever. Oh, and this is the second one. I'm doing my thumb increases, thumb gusset increases. I really like this pattern. I really like this yarn. Just happiness. I'll be very happy to give it to her and have her use it outside during recess or whatever. Um, yeah, so it's coming along. I just need to bust out those last few inches. So, <sighs> hold me to it. I'll keep going. So that's also on the needles. Not that exciting. What else do I need to tell you about that? I told you it was Claudia. I told you everything. Everything. Um, lastly, on the needles in my big Erin Lane bag that I love, love, love. You will find lots of goodies. Ugh, and a mid row. I'm sorry. So, you remember this Harvest Yarn from, ooh, <laughs> you can see. I leave my bags in there. So, this is um, not Harvest, Home Sip. Uh, this is Miss Babs. Yowza! 100% superwash merino in this glorious color. It doesn't really go with the fuchsia that I'm wearing, but it will look really good on me. <laughs> and I'm knitting the Harvest Moon by Heidi Kermier. Ker Ker Do I have a picture? I am very unorganized. You know why I'm so unorganized? Because I really haven't touched this since last time you saw it, to be honest. Or maybe I did a little bit immediately following, but not much since. So, let's see. This is a pullover. Nope, it is not a pullover. It's a cardigan. Knit from the top down. There. <laughs> this lovely pile of knit is, uh, is going to be a sweater when it grows up someday. So I've done the collar, I'm about, I'm into the short row shaping for the back neck, genius idea. And I would say for the back, I am, no, I'm past the short row shaping, I am now going all the way across this thing, this giant, giant yoke, which is what is slowing me down because, yeah, giant yoke knitting isn't really my idea of fun. I can't wait till I split off for the arms, but I am a ways from doing that. So, it's going, I need to get back to it, but... In all honesty, I wanted to be responsible and get those socks down because she would cry if everyone else got socks except her. <laughs> she really would. She's that kind of a baby. And I've knit her shawls and she likes them, but she doesn't wear them as much as she wears socks. So, socks it is. And you know what else? I'm gonna <clears throat> jump. Great job entertaining, Linus. Great job. So, I promised you I would show you a skein of yarn from Rhinebeck every week. And this is the first skein that I am unveiling. I'm sorry, I didn't get a new project cast on with it. I will, because 
Um, I'm crazy like that. <laughs> I was going to say that's my crazy, but it's not really my crazy because I do that all the time, cast on all the things. have a massive amount of works in progress that are hibernating. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my crazy for the stock and zombies would probably is to finish that sweater. I don't know if I'll be able to do that and complete Christmas knitting. But the fact that I knit a sweater already in a month and now to knit a second one, well, to be monogamous because I have no problem being a polygamous knitter. Polygamous knitter? No, but the Knit Girls came up with a really cute word for it. Anyways, this is Green Eyed Monster by Socks That Rock in the, I think it's the medium, yeah, medium weight that I got at the fold at Rhinebeck. I think it's a glorious color. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I don't know what to knit with it. <laughs> it's been sitting out for about a week because I knew this was going to be the one I was talking about and I was trying to be motivated to cast on something, but I couldn't, I couldn't. I gotta get that sucked. So, um, this is your first of many Rhinebeck yarn. I have good news. I got a new job this week. I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. Okay, let me gush about me for a minute. Um, I graduated from college and got a job as a temp, right? My husband and I moved to this area and neither one of us could find work, to be honest. Even though we both had college degrees. This was in 2003. And so we both got temp jobs. And we ended up staying at the companies we were with, these massive, his was a Fortune 500 company, mine was not massive companies, and he stayed there for six years and got promoted, 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 had a great career, and then decided he wanted to go back to school. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, my little company did really well, enjoyed what I was doing. I worked in um, apparel development and production. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Super creative. Got to work on designing sweaters for this clothing company. So much fun. And then the economy turned and the business turned and I got laid off. So I doofed around for a year, year and a half, did a couple other things that I hated, took some time off, took like six months off to just knit, didn't really like being a stay-at-home mom to cats, um, <laughs> and when, oh no, it's flashing at me, okay, and still watch the job postings, and when they had a job posting that interests me, I went back, and so that was three and a half years ago, I've been there for three and a half years in this other department doing um, data analysis, sales analysis, that's what I do on a daily basis. It's fine, it's not creative, um, it doesn't mesh my like, oh, I gotta get to the root cause and data and figure out the puzzle with creative, I like making, designing, fabric, figuring out product. I don't really like shoes that much and that's what I work on now. And so, for those of you out there that can figure this out, where do I work? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so recently, there were a bunch of dominoes, you know, this one gets promoted, that one, that one, that one, and everybody moves along the chain. And an opening came up, and it's back in apparel, and it's buying apparel, and that's a whole new area for me, and so I am so excited! I got the job! I'm, gonna go, I'm starting November 29th, which is the day before my birthday, so that's kind of funny. And oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled, so thrilled. Like, you don't see it. I'm exhausted by my job. My job is very high stress, high, fast paced. And not to say that this new position won't be, but it's different. It's a lot more presenting to upper management and presenting to the stores. and But it's put my work together and then share it with people. Something I'm proud of. Oh, just like podcasting. It's exactly like podcasting. I didn't tell any of them that I podcast, but it's very similar, right? So I'm going to bring this enthusiasm that I have for this product that I've worked on and I love and share it. <sighs> so much better than justifying the number of shoes that belong in a building. <laughs> so, congratulations to me. So happy. So that's my big news. And November 29th is 12 days away, 12 working days away, and we'll see. So, um, I can work from home from that job a lot more, like, oh, it just fits my life so much better. And the boss is great, and instead of being one of seven analysts on a team, I'm now one that reports to one. 
So that's nice too because you get that individual attention and development. And she's really cool. She has two little kids. Totally gets it that there's a mom thing. Um, during the hurricane, she actually got hit worse. And so she was out for a week with her kids and because their daycare was closed and all that. We, and thank you for asking, those of you who have up here in New Hampshire, we got hit and we lost power, but not for that long and we were okay. And the second storm that came through was nothing. We got like two inches of super heavy snow. I made it to work on time. I didn't leave early. Nothing. So I am on the coast though. New Hampshire coast is different than inland. So anyway. There you go. I hope you have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Mr. Mack is uh, supervising. He's making sure I stay on topic, which I am mostly. And thanks for watching. I hope you come back. I hope you enjoyed the show. And come over to the rap group. Nenny Samurai Plus One, I think, is a whole it podcast is the name of the group. But come over and chat it up. And talk to you soon. <laughs> fence. It's a fence. Climbing a hill. Are you stuck?